So you're very active online, um, especially on like LinkedIn, you have like weekly posts. Um, so, I mean, you have your newsletter and you have Twitter, but for me, like I follow you on LinkedIn and that's where you're like, you know, quite um, active. So why have you chosen that platform? bit like how I got into copywriting purely by accident. Uh, back in 2017, LinkedIn changed their layouts to look more like the Facebook newsfeed. And kind of overnight, it went from a place where you just stick your CV on there and had it, it just had your work history and, you know, pretty v vanilla really to a marketing platform. And I was like, wow, you can, you know, you can promote stuff that you're doing here. And then you can not only, it's not only about networking and, you know, telling people about what you're good at and sharing ideas, whatnot, but you can tell stories really. People will, people will take notice and it was a massive opportunity because no one was really doing that. A lot of people still don't. They, they just make it all about themselves and would realize it to announce our new award. It's like no one is paying attention to that post. No one cares apart from you. So if you then put that award in some kind of story, like you never wake up on a Tuesday morning, um, thinking you'll become, you know, the, the UK's leading paperclip manufacturer. Yes, here we are. There's the opening to the story. Rather than saying we're delighted to announce we've just won, you know, National Paperclip Manufacturer of the Month Award. It's like, you know, make a story out of it. So yeah, back to the back to the question. It was an opportunity to stand out, I suppose. And I'd kind of stumbled again stuck stumbled across the power of it purely by accident by putting a post out there which was how to charge more for the same thing. And then I gave three examples of a fictional product, which was sausage on toast. I think I was just having breakfast, so I thought I'll, I'll do that about sausage on toast. Um, and then they, there was three different price points. The cheapest one was sausage on toast, two pounds. And then for, th for th I think three pound 50, it was two award-winning linkages sausages on sourdough toast, three pound 50. And then the last one was like an M&S ad that was two, you know, hand reared, grain fed, lovingly, um, reared. Uh, organic sausages, linkages, sausages, thick and juice on thick and juicy sourdough, buttered, you know, thickly toast, um, like six pound. And then it was, if you want me to do this to your product description, give me a bell. And that, that got like a million views and I had 300 inquiries and I got thousands of pounds worth of business from it. And it was just like, wow, just blew my mind. So I was like, if I can. I mean, I've never, never really replicated those numbers, if, if I'm honest, but in terms of engagement, but, but yeah, it's just, it, it opened my eyes to how, how much opportunity was out there if you put on the right stuff, or if something is easy to understand, if it's relatable, if it's transferable to your industry, it, you know, if it demonstrates me as the expert in what I'm talking about, all of those, they're like little tip points of I can do that in a post, I'm going to bring business in, so yeah. That's where I focus most of my energy on um, in terms of bringing clients in. It's where I get most of my clients from, probably 70, 70 to 80% of my clients I'm, I get now from, from LinkedIn, as opposed to Twitter. Twitter's more my creative mates, really, where I'm kind of teaching people, teaching business owners who really don't know much about copy or marketing, teaching them my tricks on LinkedIn, whereas on Twitter, everyone's in on a joke already because they're all fellow copywriters. So it's more about kind of, poking fun at the industry and poking fun at, you know, dodgy signs and, you know, silly spelling errors from, you know, on council websites and whatnot. So yeah, yeah, there's a difference. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's, I mean, it's such a, it is such a powerful platform and I guess, you know, you were saying that it changed from, you know, the layout wise and, you know, um, but it was sort of still back then i think i remember it was like predominantly words but now there's a lot more you know there's, there's a lot more um scope for like videos and and pictures so you know and obviously you know humans as very visual creatures we we look at the things which have a picture or are moving so have you seen a change throughout that time in terms of like how you can get your copy to stand out has there been a change has it like declined because there's more sort of visual content or is it 
just, you know, if you have the right copy, you can just fight through all of that. Yeah, what you just said, that last bit is, is spot on. If the copy is good enough, you can kind of get away with it anywhere or, you, you know, it'll, it'll work wherever you put it. The more, I'll always say the more digestible you can make things, the better. So, you know, if you can, you're fairly limited on the text only posts on LinkedIn as to how you can um, make them digestible. You can't put subheaders in. Quite hard to put bullet points in. You can use emoji, I suppose, which kind of get around that, but. It's not like a blog post on your site where you can have, you know, quotes in boxes and you can drop images in. You're, you're fairly limited. And when you do add an image, the, the image only shows up at the very end of the post. So, yeah, it, it is quite limiting in that sense. But I have a lot of fun with the different formats. Like you can, you can upload slideshows to, to, to LinkedIn now. So I'll do, I'll do a slidey and it, after, while that post will live perfectly fine as a text only post on a slideshow, it just, it's a little, it gives, gives the reader a little bit more to do so that as to flipping through and you can kind of pause just before the punchline really nicely on a slideshow. So yeah, I quite like using them and video is good as well. I don't do video very often, but when I do, I, it, it's normally, it normally goes down quite well. Again, it's kind of in keeping with my usual style, which is, you know, a little bit daft and silly and funny. Um, never, it never really gets too serious. So the last, yeah, probably when was it just before Valentine's day, I did a series of five videos one a day monday to friday um and it was like satirical pictures for valentine's day so i was pretending to pick ideas to companies but they were just the worst ideas in the world and it was me just me just on a f kind of phone so like little daft sketches i suppose me on the phone saying like singing songs and coming up with slogans but like really poor slogans and bad taste slogans um so they they do quite well but yeah, I quite like that. that it, and I do that just purely to kind of flex my, my creative muscles, really. I'm like, right, can I, can I come up with an idea in a day here? And I don't, I don't ever plan them out. I come up with the ideas like the previous 24 hours before, just so it's, it kind of keeps me, keeps me fresh. So I, I use that as a bit of a creative exercise as well. Back to the question. Yeah. No, there's no, no limits really in terms of you know, the, the different formats, as long as the copy's good, it'll, it'll, it'll work anyway. I don't, I'm not a designer. I, I'll, I'll drop a meme in or something that I've seen on Twitter. If, it, if it's funny and if I can kind of put a, a funny copy or creative angle on it, but you know, there's, there's amazing designers out there doing kind of really brilliant and creative stuff. So I think LinkedIn, as LinkedIn continues evolving, they'll probably make, um, you know, make it make more allowances for designers and, and people who think a little bit more visually, um, which they're, they're already doing. There's lo loads of really cool stuff out there. There's a designer designer on there called Dave Officer. He, he does little videos and he's so, so creative. It's just amazing. You know, he just kind of, he has a, cam a camera over his shoulder showing how he'll design something and he'll like speed it up and you can see how something goes from blank page through to this coolest thing you've ever seen. And, you know, being able to do that for designers, I think is, is really good, but yeah, I think link, LinkedIn's, it's only going to kind of get better for creatives. They've already, you know, created the stories like Instagram stories. And I know that they're always looking at, at ways to, um, kind of expand things. Mm -hmm.